right, so this is a practice test for tomorrow. Tomorrow is the control statement test. And that's the last major grade of the semester. The, the semester ends Wednesday, so make sure you get this in. All right, so this is going to be practice for our control statement since we learned uh, in the last month and a week or so. Uh, so what will the final value of A be at the end of the following snippets? So here we go. Here's just a regular if statement. Uh, B is 6, C is 7, and then A is no, not yet assigned. So if C is greater than 4, I'm going to run this statement here. If not, I'm not going to run this statement. And either way, I'm going to continue the code down here. So, so C is 7. So 7 is greater than 4. So A is going to be B plus C. And that's simply 6 plus 7, right? 13. However, this statement is going to say the new value of A is going to be 4 plus B, which is 6. So 4 plus 6 is 10. And A is going to take on that value. It's no longer 13. It's going to be 10. So 10. All the answers are down the bottom, so I don't have to type them in here. The answers are down here. Oh, I thought they were down there. All right, so 10. All right, next one. We have an if-else statement. Again, the way an if-else statement works, if this is true, I'm going to run this line. If this is not as... If this not's true, I'm going to run. If it is not true here, I'm going to run this line. So B is 3, C is 10. If C is greater than 4, well, 10 is greater than 4, so I'm going to run this. And I'm not going to run this guy down here. I'm going to run this guy. So A is going to be B plus C. Well, B is 3, C is 10. 10 plus 3 is 13. Number 3, I have a loop, a while loop. B is 3. I have an in A. So 3 is less than or equal to 10. That's true. So I'm going to run this block of code. A is going to be B plus 7. Right? Well, B is 3. 3 plus 7 is 10. I'm going to write this in here. Just for my own sanity. So I don't forget. And B is now going to be the old value of B, which is 3. 3 plus 2 is 5. So B is going to be 5. And we come up here. Well, 5 is less than or equal to 10. Yes. So A is not going to be B. Well, B is now 5. 5 plus 7 is 12. That's a new value of A. And B is now uh, the old value of B, which is 5. 5 plus 2 is 7. So B becomes 7. Let me come up here. Well, 7 is less than or equal to 10. Yes. So A is not going to be B, which is now 7. 7 plus 7. That's 14. That's a new value of A. And B is going to be the old value of B, 7 plus 2, which is 9. I'll come up here. 9 is less than or equal to 10. That's true. So I'm going to run this again. A is going to be B, 9 plus 7. Well, that's 16. And B is now going to be 9. The old value would be 9 plus 2. 9 plus 2 is 11. Then we come up here. Well, 11 is not equal, less than or equal to 10. So we're done running it. There's no code down below here. So the final value of A was the 16. So that's the answer. 16. All right. Number. And when you do your work, you can leave this in here so I can see your thought process going on while you're doing these for the, for the test. All right. The next number four is a for loop. Right. And in B is 4. I have two other in C and A. 4, well, C is going to start at 1. C is going to be 1. Then we're going to check here. If this is true, I'm going to run the code, and then I'm going to go up here and process it. So C is 1. 1 is less than or equal to 4. Yes. So A is now going to be B, which is 4 plus 10, 14. So A is 14 right now. And B is going to be B plus 2. Well, B was 4. 4 plus 2 is 6. Then we go up here. Well, C was 1, and now I'm going to process C. C is now going to be the old value of C, 1 plus 1. So C is now 2, right? Well, 2 is less than or equal to 4, right? I'll put a little 2 here so I remember. 2 is less than or equal to 4, so A is not going to be B, right? Well, B was, uh, B is now 6, right down here. So 6 plus 10 is 16, and B is going to be the old value of B, 6 plus 2, 8. Then we come up here. We're going to add 1 to C. 2 plus 1 is 3. Then we look here. 3 
is 3 less than or equal to 4? Yes. I'm going to run this again. So A is now going to be B, which is now 8. 8 plus 10 is 18. B is now going to be 8 plus 2. B is now 10. Come up here. Add 1 to C. 3 plus 1 is 4. Let's check this condition. Is 4 less than or equal to 4? Yes. So now we're going to run this, run this again. A is going to be B, which is now 10. 10 plus 10 is 20. Right? And B is now B plus 2, which is 10 plus 2, which is 12. And we're going to go up here. C is now C plus 1. Uh, 4 plus 1 is 5. Right? And we now we see that 5 is not less than or equal to 4, so we're going to stop this loop. We're going to look down here for any code, and there is none. So the final value of A was 20. So the answer for this one's 20. Number five, we have a compound if else, uh, two integers, B is three and A. If B equals zero, I'm gonna do this. If else, if B is one, I'm gonna do this. And we're only gonna do one of these. One of these is gonna get run no matter what. Uh, if B is two, I'm gonna run that. Well, B is not any of these, B is three. So I'm gonna run this default case. A is gonna be B, which is three plus 10. 13. So the final value of A here was 13. 6. A do while. The difference between a do while loop and a regular while loop is that the code to be run is going to gonna run at least once, right? And the condition comes after that. So we have in A, B, B is going to be 2. So A is going to be 8 plus B. A is 10 to start. And B is B plus 3. Well, B is 2. 2 plus 3 is 5. And then we go, now we look here at this condition. Uh, while B is less than 10, well, 5 is less than 10, so I'm going to do this again. A is now 8 plus 5, 13. B is B plus 3, 5 plus 3 is 8. 8 is less than 10, yes, I'm going to run this again. B, A is now 8 plus 8, which is 16. B becomes 8 plus 3, 11. And then we're going to stop the loop. 11 is not less than 10, right? So we break out of the loop. We come down here. There's no code down here to run. Always check that. So the last value of A was 16. So the answer to 6 is 16. All right, number 7. In ABC, we have a switch statement. And C is 2. B is going to be 1 plus C. Well, B is going to be 3. And we're going to switch on B. So we're going to switch on 3. So we're going to look for the case with a 3. If, the, if it's not there, we go to the default. So case 1, no. Case 2, no. Case 3, here we go. A is going to be B, which is 3 plus 7, 10. And then we break. And then we look for any code after the switch statement. There's none. Right? There's none down here. So A was uh, B, 3 plus 7, which is 10. So the final value of A was 10. Answer. Okay, another switch statement. However, we don't have any breaks in the cases. So whatever case I run, right, I'm going to keep running all the other cases until I either hit a break or hit the default. So same thing in the beginning. C is 1, B is 2 plus 1, 3. So we're going to switch on 3. Okay, well, A is going to be B plus 4. Okay, which is now 3 plus 4 is 7. However, there's no break. So we're going to run this case. A is B plus 5. 3 plus 5 is 8. No break. We're going to continue. So we're going to do the default. And A is going to be B, 3 plus 6. And that's 9. And there's no code down here. So the last value of A was 9. Answer, 9. All right. Logical operators. Right? Ors. And or was 2 pipes that went like that and was two ampersands so using logical operators how would you type the following if statement if c is greater than or equal to negative 8 and less than 14 so we're going to say if c 
see is greater than or equal to negative 8. I'm going to say or here. Or. Or. Less than 14. But we can't just say less than 14. We have to say. Well, and or C is less than 14. So there it is. There it is. All right, if M is less than 9 or M is greater than 25. Wait a second. Wait, wait, wait. It should be an and here. It's and. Here's the and. So if C is greater than or equal to negative 8, there it is there. And. And. Less than 14. Well, I can't just say less than 14. I have to say and C is less than 14. Boom. All right, next one. If M is less than 9. So if M is less than 9. Or. Or. M is greater than 25. That's it. That's all you got to do for these. Now here's a long one here. So we're going to say if. X is equal to 12. Don't forget two equal signs. And. And t is not equal to 5, right? Remember, not equals an exclamation point and then an equal. And m is greater than 5. And y equals low t. So we're going to say and y equals, and don't forget, we need, we're comparing it to a character, the letter t. So we need that. There's the answer for 11. All right, generating random integers. And you don't need to do the SRAN time null. You don't have to pound include anything. Just do the actual generation line, the line that executes the uh, integer generation. So we're going to simply say RAND parentheses percent. And we want to go 0 to 4, so we're simply going to say 5 here. That's it. That will generate a random integer from 0 to 4. Next one. Generate a random integer from 1 to 20. And R equals RAND percent 20 plus 1. And you can put a plus 0 up here if you want. You can put a plus 0, right? But... Uh, that's zero is the additive identity for addition, meaning that if I add zero to anything, it gives me the same thing. So you can leave that out. Next one, generate a random integer from 20 to 30, right? So we're going to say whatever in R equals rand percent, right? And what we're going to do is going to subtract the high 30 minus the low 20. So 30 minus 20 is 10. Then we're going to add one. So that's going to be 11. And we're going to say plus the low. There it is. 30 minus 20 is 10. Plus 1 is 11. Write that there. Plus the starting number, which is 20. All right. And that's it. Now, of course, it's just review. So uh, the test will be like this. And you're going to, you know, uh, have maybe one or two programs to write short programs nothing nothing intense like the ones you've been doing in the last week so again don't forget test is tomorrow get that done the final day is the eighth for the marking period